My name is Sinead. It's lovely to meet you. What's your name? My name is Sudhir Chabda. Sudhir, you can call me Sudhir. Sudhir, okay, great. Nice to meet you. Um, so, Likewise. today you wanted to focus on an IELTS mock exam, is it? Yeah. Yes, okay, great. And um, would it be okay with you if we complete the exam and then I'll make some notes and I can send you a detailed um, review and with your results and everything at the end? I'll send it to you in an email, is that okay? Oh, that's Christmas. Uh, nothing better than that. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so we can we can start whenever you like, if you'd like, because it only takes about 15 minutes. We can talk for 15 minutes now and then complete the exam, or we can complete the exam and then chat live after. I don't mind. We can start right off the bat. No issues. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so we'll start with part one. So, can you tell me what is your name? My full name is Sudhir Chabra, and you can call me Sudhir. Excellent. And which town or city do you come from? I come from Amritsar. It's a small city in the Punjab state, Punjab state of India. I live in the northern part of India. Okay, excellent. And what's the best thing about living in that city, in that town? Uh, the food is scrumptious, it's very delicious, it's very spicy. And if you come here, I think the first thing you're going to be recommended is that food only. After that, I think there are a lot of tourist places and we have the world famous Golden Temple here. So it's a kind of heaven. Excellent. Okay. And um, how do you plan your time in a day, in your typical day in India? I'm... I'm not an organization person to that obsessive extent, but yeah, I have a schedule. Since I'm a teacher, I have a schedule of classes that I'm going to conduct this classes, this class at that time or that class at this time. So it's organized, but uh, on a very, I would say, macroscopic level. On the microscopic level, I take things as they come. Okay, excellent. And do you find it easy to manage time? Yeah, I think I'm quite good at it because I have been in this field for quite a long time. I've been teaching for six years now or probably in the vicinity of that period. So like it's now, you know, it's my second nature now. It is like something that I can do as easily as I breathe. Okay, excellent. What do you, sorry, when do you find it hard to allocate your time? So is there any time that you find it difficult to allocate time? Uh, when I have a lot of students, like... Since I'm the only person who is org who is handling my website or my portal, so sometimes it happens that I get a blizzard of students. And that time, it is like a little difficult for me to allocate batches to them and organize, you know, the classes and, uh, you know, conduct each class with uh, the utmost enthusiasm. However, uh, as, uh, you know, maybe I am talented enough, I am able to, you know, pass muster and things have been hunky-dory. Great. Okay. And do you like being busy? I love it because I think both being busy and being free make you crazy. But this craziness that uh, comes from being busy is better than the busyness that comes from being free. So I like this anxiety more than that, uh, you know, listlessness. Yeah, you like to keep busy. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, so I'm just going to get a timer up. Um, so the topic that we're going to talk about in part two is describe something that you can't live without, except for a computer or a phone. <laughs> so you should say what this thing is, what you do with it, how it helps you in your life and explain why you can't live without it. Um, so I will put up a timer for one minute and you can make some notes if you like and just have a think about that. So your timer starts now.
Okay, and your time is up. So you can start to speak now. So I'll record you for, sorry, not record you. I will time you for two minutes. <laughs> okay, and start. It may sound a little vain, but uh, the one thing that I can talk about right now is the show Friends because it has become a part of my life. Whenever I'm free, I watch Friends. I have completed all the 10 seasons, you know, maybe 10 times now, but still it is as fresh as a daisy. I go to the first season as soon as the 10th season is off. And uh, it's a soap opera and it was there, uh, you know, in the past, but now it is now it is available on Netflix. And I watch it whenever I'm free, whenever I'm eating, whenever I'm, you know, perhaps in a bad mood, it is going to please me, I know. And that is because it has a character that is as zany as I want to be. The name of the character is Phoebe Buffay. I love her. Lisa Kudrow is excellent. Uh, you know, she has portrayed that character like Billy O. And uh, it helps me release my stress, as I said. And uh, I can't live without it because there's no other show that has helped me, you know, pass through my depression phase or maybe phase or maybe, you know, even... Whenever something of such a kind happens, I'm not able to resort to anything else. I've started watching Big Bang, the Big Bang Theory also, or maybe Big Bang Theory. I don't know the placement of the article, if it is there or not. Uh, but that was something to, I would say, niche. I could not really relate to that. I liked it, but uh, because of a lot of jargon regarding scientific stuff, I was not able to like it as much as I like Friends. Uh, in Friends only, I love another character. Her name is uh, Rachel. That is because she is dumb again. She's dumb again, and uh, but she is not dumb to that extent. She is not as she is not so dumb as Phoebe, but again she has that bimbo kind of quality. She is a fashion uh, person. She works in the fashion. In, she works in the fashion industry, and uh, her two sisters are the epitome of being a bimbo because they are just about how they look like. But I think that is for the comedic effect. Um, another another character who is all the rage, I think, all over the world is Chandler Bing, and I purchased a book regarding him also, a book based on him, and it seems to be an autobiography because the writer is, uh, you know, Matthew Perry, Matthew Perry only, who is playing the character in the series, and I've not read it yet. I look forward to reading it, but currently I'm reading um, Front of the Class by Brad Cohen, so I want to finish it first. Friends is available on Netflix and it remains among the top 10 in India, I think, always because, as I said, as it has affected me, most Indians have taken to it like, you know, you know, a moth would take to a flame. So it's like something that is, that is going to remain with us as, uh, you know, enthusiastically as has the Ramayana, our, you know, holy scripture, our epic. And uh, furthermore, Maybe after this class also, because I'm going to eat my food. I'm going to eat my food before my class. So I would be watching a, I would, I would be watching a show of that, uh, you know, uh, series only. I am particularly interested in one, uh, you know, episode where Phoebe gives a massage to Rachel and Phoebe is moonlighting as another person, but Rachel captures her. She knows the, you know, touring and uh, then she tries to manipulate Phoebe. But Phoebe, as I said, is a goddess and she is able to salvage herself. Uh, in that uh, episode particularly, there's a receptionist who speaks very, you know, artificially through the glass doors, something like that. And uh, Rachel makes fun of her accent. And that is, again, something that has happened to me also because I'm an English speaking person in my country and not many people respect, you know, English speaking people because they think that there is a kind of linguistic jingoism in India now. So if you speak English, you are a charlatan, you are a whippersnapper, you are, you know, showing off. So I've been a victim of that. But that amuses me also because, you know, Rachel is the richer one and the receptionist is perhaps the poorer one. So maybe the people who are making fun of me are the poorer, poorer ones here and I'm the, you know, person on the higher level. And uh, in that show, I think there is another element that is, you know, something par excellence. I do not uh, actually you know, remember that now. But again, there are so many episodes to look forward to. And even if I'm not able to come across one particular episode that is going to, you know, uh, tickle my funny bone right now, I would watch any of the episodes that are there because I think each of them is a gem. And uh, being, you know, an, an admirer of the show, I can uh, use any of the gems right now. Okay, excellent. Um, 
Very good. Um, we went a little bit over time, but that's okay. I, I got a lot of information, so that's good. Okay, excellent. Um, so, wonderful. So, part three, I'm going to ask you a few in-depth questions about things that we can't live without and stuff like that. Um, so, why are children attracted to new things? What do you think? First of all, they have, you know, just entered the domain called life and uh, every new thing is going to attract them. And that happens to the adults also. Whenever we come across something, there is a kind of awe that makes us go toward that thing. And for children, I think almost ev- almost all things are new. So that human instinct of exploring things and uh, being able to get into that zone, you know, are the things that they, you know, succumb to and they just uh, want to. Uh, tamper with the thing right away yeah okay and why do grown-ups hate to throw out old things like clothes maybe because they've known the value of money Uh, as we grow old we get to know that life is something that is not any kind of a miracle we have known that we are just a species and uh, and when that magic goes away when that zaza zoo goes away We are not able to come to terms with the fact that, okay, there's a God or there is something mystical that is going to value our living here or maybe life has any special meaning. Now we are all about uh, making things last as long as possible. So we eke out resources and uh, we are able to, you know, save money by that, of course. So we just want to make our existence easier. And in order to make that existence easier, we have to have a lot of money. If we keep throwing away things, we are going to have to buy new ones and new ones are going to cost us more. For that, we have to work more and working is not going to make our lives easier. So just to make it comfortable while we live, we keep all things as for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you have anything in your home that you have had for a long time that you value? I value everything. I'm an old person. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm 27 years old, but I think like a 72 years old because... I've had some rough times in my life and uh, now I'm not excited about life. I'm just passing it. The thing is that um, everything that pertains to me is only there because of its usefulness. It is not there because of its uh, maybe decorative elements. The t-shirt I'm wearing perhaps is about four years old. The headphones I'm wearing are about uh, eight months old. The laptop I'm using is perhaps six years old or perhaps, you know, everything is X years old here. I am not into buying new things a lot. I buy exams a lot. Till now, I passed more than 50 English exams. And that is, again, by virtue of that, uh, you know, uh, making life easy thing phenomenon. I want to be, I want to remain saleable. And I have to make a portfolio that is going to keep me saleable uh, for throughout my life. And for that, I have to have a, you know, profile that is second to none. So suppose at a point, I've passed almost all English exams in the world, which you know, now are at 52 or 53, perhaps I will remain, uh, you know, commercial till my death. And that is going to earn me money, which is going to make my life comfortable, as was the uh, aim in the previous question or the question before that. So like here, it is all about uh, the utility. I am not afraid of the futility at all. Both utility and futility, I know what what they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And um. Hmm. What do you think influences people to buy new things? For starters, when the old things are worn out, they have to buy new things. For instance, your car is not working properly or maybe your uh, shirt has had uh, more holes than you know adequate. Then you're going to buy something new in that regard. Uh, apart from that, competition. We know we, are, we have brains, but we have hearts also. So sometimes our competitors have better things. So if, if we are not wise enough, we are going to buy a new entity. To illustrate, neighbors in India cannot stand each other's prosperity. So they would want to buy something that is superior to what the adjoining person has. Uh, finally, I would say because of the uh, maybe advertisement phenomenon, advertisements have been made more interesting than studies in India, or maybe otherwise also in the rest of the world also. So these advertisements are a big bait. They attract us a lot and we buy things even when we don't need them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay, excellent. Um, that's it. That's it. So good job. That was good. <laughs>
Um, and I'll send you the feedback for that um, later. I'm going to calculate all of my different grades and stuff, and then I'll send you that on with some feedback as well. Um, okay. So, 